Yo, what is good, everybody? What is good, my anime people? So, let's get straight into these fun, fun videos where I get so much, so much backlash from random people. But hey, baby, that's because I'm being honest, and that's because even after saying what I say, no one usually comes and tells me that everything I said is complete trash or complete, you know, just fodder and stuff like that. So it's funny to me to see all the dislikes, but then people just don't have really anything negative to say. They just, I think they're just more or less mad that this channel actually has views with so many low subscribers. So thank you guys for the support. But this week's episode, <clears throat> we really need to talk about... We really need to talk about, like, what in the heck is going on with Kamaki, my lord, at the end. But that's for the end of the video. But um, I really want to touch up on something that I was probably the only one, but I don't think I was the only one. And I really need to hear your guys' input slash output slash flash put. When I was watching this, tell me... If it was only me who was trying to stop Juzo and Kamaki from fighting, man. I'm literally like, Juzo, stop it. No. No. <laughs> I literally wanted this man to literally back off. Just, just, just learn what you're doing. How about you go talk to the man who you stole the motorcycle from, who's obviously smarter enough than, uh, you know, actually look into it. And I think this is playing in to a bigger part of Juso's character, which I have been scared to actually see the true nature of it. And I think he's truly stuck in his way of killing ghouls to such a degree that it's also the last thing that he did with his, you know, his, uh, the person that he actually grew to enjoy to be around, or at least enjoy to, you know, talk to and stuff like that. <clears throat> it's, it's really actually kind of sad. Like, the only thing he has to you know what they used to do together i mean besides unless he remembers they could go to the zoo like come on juzo you got the zoo man go draw some picture and think about him but ah, he goes in with this super dope armor it just goes to show you how strong comic he is and not to mention that this is a whole new comic and i love 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 that aspect of Kamaki's character he is such a complex character that if you haven't been watching from the beginning how in the heck could you ever just understand this character or even be able to understand the uh, series as a whole if you haven't seen anything previously up to this part to get you here um, that's just how the story is that's just how beautiful and how much they take from the old stuff and make sure it's not dead at all like they make everything come back from the past and either they're going to give it justice or they're going to do it dirty, you know. So regardless, they're going to bring it back. And the thing that they brought back, even though it was it probably did not get out the justice that people are telling me it did in the manga. And that is the Reaper form comic key. That is probably one of the more doper times that I've seen comic key. And one of the most heartless times, too. Like even, oh my gosh, she's going to probably kill him. No, nope. <clears throat> even when he was talking to uh you know are not talking to him but he was talking to him as back as gold gold uh the grim weeper comic key man he's even like then you you know he's just you don't give a crap bro like he's already set you know like whatever he wanted to do he is doing it and doing it well um and that's why it's so weird that he didn't sh stay out as long as he did because seemingly he had more things uh you know that he does throughout <clears throat> and that is like my favorite f looking form of comic key when when we first got to like announce to him i didn't like his attitude the way he treated the kid but i mean hey i looked past that because he looked so dope and he had his black hair back but the thing i want to talk about and the thing that really like pushed me and comic key close to the edge was just seeing these idiots going in on toka a whole half of an army pretty much going in on her and, you know, he, it's like, man, if she wasn't pregnant and if she 
wasn't eating actual human food for nutrients for the child, man. She would have ran through some of these people, man. But I, I, it makes sense that, you know, she's got to look weak and she's got to put our boy Kabaki into berserker state, you know. But, uh, yeah, seeing the Kamaki that started it all, the real Rize Kamaki sitting in there, you know, pretty much looking like he's biding his time, guys. It feels like he is the one who truly just took it over. Like his, his self, maybe he didn't necessarily, like, surrender himself to his other personas and stuff like that because i think if he did that uh we toka would have been in more danger than actual being able to help her so <clears throat> it would make sense to me if he you know surrendered a little bit of it to get power but at the same time he's still fully in control and maybe when we catch up to him wherever his body is because i believe his body is just like a nub guys he's literally got a nub of a body it's it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> um, and, I mean, he's got a nub, but his whole... I didn't bring small bombs? Well, uh, but his whole entire body is pretty much just acting out with the Kamui and just carrying him everywhere. He has no arms and legs. and Well, he had two arms, but he didn't, I don't believe he had legs. He didn't even have, like, a lower half, guys. And he is wrecking the whole entire city still. Still. And to trans to to get out of the Kamaki Toka business, even though that was really the highlight in the like what the WTF moment. Um seeing my boy trying to finally understand, you know his position in it all. Oh, I, you guys notice my name is Rize up there? Because she's a dope character. Um, my boy in there fighting the CCG and trying to, you know, understand just why everybody is looking at it in such a negative way and stuff. And he quickly finds out that whatever he had planned to do here, it's over. Like, you, you, you're done now. <laughs> like, holy crap, bro. Two of, like, the most randomest characters that... Uh, trust me, people in the comments are going to let me know if they're actually, you know, bigger characters in the manga or not. But the two characters that are fighting off uh, the two directors or inspectors, they they are so just, like... They were annoying. Not only were they annoying... They they always were like inside of someone's butt or something, you know, like how where were they coming from? How do they just show up? We're in a room where nothing is being hidden besides you're telling me they're both behind the desk, you know, doing something under the desk like come on, bruh. <laughs> um, I mean, or less in the manga, they're teleport. They have teleportation or something. And that's one thing they didn't explain. Uh. It was just weird to me that they were just chilling the whole time by that man's lap underneath the desk, uh, you know, for the most part. Because it's not like the glass broke when they showed up or something like they broke in from behind and stuff. Because we can clearly see the glass uh, is still not broken when he's telling Kamaki to eat him. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, and I'm probably the only one who really noticed that small detail about that, you know, or cared to mention it, I bet. Um, it's just, it was just weird to me. Uh, like, I understand that they're, they're super weird and they're like circus freaks and stuff like that. So I guess it makes sense for them to curl themselves up into a ball and hide under a desk right next to someone's feet, uh, including if he orders it. And not to mention they really show off that she was always the brains of that operation she turning into an sss ranked ghoul with a giant freaking body kind of just like uh the one-eyed owl so i was guessing maybe they like made her stronger that way maybe she like ate a piece of her or something because as soon as we see Kamo Kamo eat uh kamaki eat one of those people's face even though they're clones you know, he goes into that berserker mode and stuff like that, but 
Imagine if one of those people who are already super powerful bites into another ghoul who's super freaking powerful. You know what I mean? That's just how I saw this. Like, they probably gain some, <clears throat> or at least her anyway, because... Uh, but at the same time, um, that's just me doing headcanon at, at first sight, because, I mean, there's not too much of the story to be like, oh, yeah, she definitely was just holding back this whole time, and, uh, she, uh, clearly had this power. Like, you know, it's, I can't say that with the anime, you know what I mean? Like, it looked, it looked relatively like a new ability that she's never really had, but by the way she reacted and the way that it kind of, like, sprouted out of her... I guess you could say she seemingly had control, like, not control, but she seemingly could have been using this for a long time. If you really wanted to, uh, I can I can understand the argument, but at the same time, in the anime, it, it just didn't feel as, uh, as easily accepted, I want to say. I, I accept it because, you know, we kind of need a character to push our character to a breaking point to become stronger. Which he kind of didn't even do, man. Like, he got... He, he definitely gotten stronger at controlling. But I was ready for him to snap out, bro. To be honest. I was like, just just go stupid dumb. Just go dumb, dumb, dumb on him. <laughs> they, they, they cut off my boy's hand. One of my favorite investigators. Even though the hand was fake. Because no blood was, like, scoring out of it and stuff. He clearly lost it. Uh, probably prior to uh re coming out but man bro i i really wanted him to just snap out and and just go for it but it makes sense that he didn't because now it just goes to show you that we have a guy who's half ghoul uh, on the ccg that actually can go to a state of very strong like nature of power and stuff and then pretty much have a fighting chance at, uh, you know, beating Kamaki without maybe doing collateral damage, <clears throat> seeing how the one-eyed king is really the main thing that, um, you know, this guy had been kind of focusing on, you know, so I, or Fuka, or whatever his stupid name is, killing the best investigator, what, well, he was one of the best investigators. Uh, the guy with the white hair was up there, and then the guy who he always worked with, his partner in crime, was right next to him too. So it's just a it's just a tough pill to swallow, man. Just knowing that he's gone like that, he went out protecting the guy's son who he couldn't he couldn't protect the men, so he protected his son. And I respect that a lot about his character, so to just see him get stabbed in the neck when maybe he had a chance when all these people arrived to get him out of there, ha, it, it made me mad. And I wanted him to lose it and go in, but someone shooting him in the face felt really good until I thought about it. And I was like, we just saw a blade go through the chick's head and come out the other side. What the heck is a bullet gonna do, okay? <laughs> like, let's be real, bro. You, y'all, if I had put my blade through somebody and she still came back almost the same strength, if not stronger, uh, I am not giving the other guy the benefit of the doubt either. You know what I mean? Like, come on, bro. You have a Kamui, and you know what I mean. He's he's a he's a quince and all this stuff. It's not. Uh, a huge thought process to be like, huh, what if he has some type of stuff like that? You know what I mean? Like, what if he is very powerful too, like, and did the surgery like how I did? Nah, no one would do the surgery like me. You know, that, that's kind of what the thought process I felt happened here, and uh, it was a pretty stupid one <laughs> at, at, at the least, you know? So, to know that our biggest thinker didn't think through uh, the guy living a bullet when, you know, they lived through the most powerful weapon they have, which is the blaze that they bring out. Uh, hence why they had to use them to fight against the ghouls in the first freaking place. It, it was just weird to me in that instance that they let him... I, I would have put so many different things into his body it, like and pinned him down if I could. But I guess it doesn't matter because whatever Kamaki supposedly is happening to him, for some reason, him doing all this 
is part of the plan of this guy, and he wants to be eaten by Kamaki. And I, I wonder if he's saying that in an ironic state of, like, he's going to eat everybody, and I'm just going to be one of them. Or if he does eat him, he'll be able to be inside of him. But I, I don't feel like that's, you know, uh, like that's the canon part. Because if if anything, the person we should be seeing inside of Kamaki at that time of him losing it and stuff like that is Rize. And if they're saying that, you know, people that you eat or something, you can, like, sense their presence or something within you, um, then, you know, Juzo should be there as well. Like, uh, Jason should be in there, so... It's weird to think that um, this whole him being eaten is going to give him a benefit uh, overall throughout this. So I really want to know what uh, that kind of is about without trying to not spoil me. <laughs> like, I, I usually try to forget everything I learned because it doesn't really necessarily fall in place with the manga, regardless of it, you know, being the source material and whatnot. But if you guys do feel so deeply inclined to tell your boy what is going on, thank you. And uh, everybody who is watching up to this part and heard me say that, be careful when you go in the comments and don't get spoiled. Because uh, I will be going in with my, <laughs> with my friends on here, my anime people, just to really get a better concept. Because every time I get a better concept of things, it kind of makes me appreciate what i what i got out of it myself uh first watch and sec maybe second watch sometimes when i do these videos but thank you guys so much for watching uh comic key is actually losing it again and the centipede comic key the one that truly was the one that we all feared would be the the comic key forever is still somewhere in there he is and he's so far in there that he's got a chair like everybody else but he's the only one sitting okay he don't even care about the host body he's like you know i've been in here and there's five other me and then including you all right bruh like i've been through this <laughs> okay i don't care anymore just just get it done and if you guys have not ever seen yu yu haka show there is a character that kind of has the same uh, personality crisis, this making of new uh, new personas within himself, or just new per people in general. Uh, it, it was a Yu Yu Hakusho, and his name was Sinsui. And to see this happening to another one of my favorite characters in Kamaki, and to you know be like almost a shout out to to. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, man, it really, really hit uh, deep that, you know, this kid is going to be going through it probably for quite some time. Um, unless there's going to be some weird sacrifice, like they all go out of his body to try to protect him, you know, his own, like, mind and stuff, and they all fail, and then he has to go back out and fight, you know, and then they all die or something like that, I could see. But if this is am i really gonna die to the easiest monster to beat on in this group of people um i i just i'm just not sure uh how much longer this whole because i i'm guessing with how you know we learned about the investors and how close they were like the guy actually hating himself and not the investigators he hated that his self was so weak back then that he couldn't help his dad I'm guessing there was probably more explanation between then and now of him figuring that out just by the way he was cradling, you know, the old man in his final times. It, it just, there's things like that that I, I can't wait to read the manga uh, when, this, when this whole thing is said and done on the anime side. Um, so yeah, definitely going to be learning just why everybody appreciates the manga so much uh, comparing and it should be nice to at least get a you know an instance of clarification of 
some of these like people's moves and see if they're really like just and stuff like that. But if you guys enjoyed, I just jumped and bought that full man. Holy crap. Drop a like for that if you saw that. <laughs> um, but if you guys enjoyed, make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe. Sorry if this video was long. I just had a lot to say about this. There was so much that happened. And I even left out some stuff. I wanted to talk a lot more about different things. But I will save that for the comment section because I get to talk as long as I want there. And I still got to watch Black Clover and make a review for it. So with all that being said, guys, thank you so freaking much. I enjoy you guys. You've been watching my slime videos, all these different videos I've been putting out. And you guys have just been supporting me like you don't even care. And I love every moment of it. I just want to let you guys know I appreciate you guys. And I will be putting out a lot more content very soon. So make sure you subscribe and Hit that notification bell if you ever want to just be notified and in the loop every time I drop a video. So with that, everybody, my anime people, take care, and I will talk to you later. All right. Peace. This one's for Kamaki and Toga! Ah! Ooh! Shout out. <laughs>